Hey guys, so here's a quick tip to show you how to drastically humanize your sample drum parts so they don't sound so robotic and uh, programmed and seem to have more flow and more humanity. So let's start. Here's just a simple clip that I made. Kick, snare, and a little shaker. So this is the part that I've made. Doesn't sound really very human at all. It just sounds very robotic and kind of blah. So the first thing that we're going to do here in our drum rack is we're going to find our samples. And the very first thing I like to do is turn up this velocity. And what that means is these levels right here are different velocity points. So depending on, on how high they are is going to be how loud they play each hit. So when you turn up this, it's going to give more dynamic to the volume. So let's go ahead and turn the sounds that I'm using up to oh, about 70%. Okay, so that, that makes a pretty drastic difference, you know, just as it is. But I want to take things a bit further and give them an even more human feel. And there's a couple techniques that I want to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert our simpler instruments into sampler instruments. So go ahead and right click. And they'll, they'll maintain the settings that you had previously. So the velocity setting will remain. Let's go in here and I'll switch this over to a sampler and then I'll go to my kick and do the same thing. Okay, great. So there's a couple things that I want to do and um, we'll go ahead and start on the snare. All right. So here's our snare and there's our sample. And what we want to do is we first want to go into the modulation. And I'm going to turn this LFO on. And I've already got the setting pretty much right around where I want. But what this is doing is this, this is moving up and down. So this will actually control different parameters down here. So what I would do, because these are normally set to zero, is inject a little bit even more humanity to it so it's, it's a bit random even though it hits on a certain velocity this is going to actually control volume just a little bit more so it never plays exactly the same and then I'm going to add uh, maybe 7% panning and the pitch just slightly maybe about a little less than 1% you can probably go up to 2% but I kind of notice it a, a little bit more around there and then the next thing that we're going to want to do, because here, let's, if we go back to the sampler or the actual sample, every time it's hit, it plays from the very beginning of the sample. So you're going to get the same sound every time. Well, what we can do over here is we could come in to the velocity section on our little MIDI tab and check sample offset. Now, if we go up, that means the harder or the, the more velocity, the later in the sample it's going to play. We don't want that. We want it to be the lower the velocity, the lower the volume, the further into the sample that it's going to play. Because then the, the softer hits are not going to play the, the beginning transient every time. So it'll create a much more human feel and, and you'll, you'll be able to see. So anyway, I've set this up here, and this is how our snare sounds now. A much more human feel. Um, if you look over here, you'll notice that the starting point starts at different times depending on the velocity.
it's a little f too fast to see, but it's not all playing at the very beginning. So you're getting these softer hits and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the hi-hat as well. Or I mean the shaker. Go ahead and turn on this. And I've got my settings already set up. And back this off. And then with the kick, we don't want to go too extreme with the kick. We want it to, to remain pretty solid. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to turn on this LFO and I'll bring the volume difference just down a little bit. Kick just slightly and then just like half a percent of the pitch. And this is what the drums sound like now. All right, and the last thing that I want to do to give this a less quantized sound, even though it sounds pretty live right now, is I'm going to drag this clip into the groove pool. It doesn't really matter what, what clip you're, you're dragging. Just drag anything in there. And then I'm just simply going to turn up random. So let's just turn it up to... Who knows, 12%. You could you could go less than this, but you know, I just want it to be fairly noticeable. And then once once you've set this up, you don't need to change anything else. But this is just going to make sure that every time a hit is played, it's got a 12% random nature to it. So it's not always going to play in the exact same spot. And then I'm just going to drag that groove on top of the clip. And that's our final step. You may or may not notice the groove difference in this video, but it definitely makes a difference overall in your track by adding a little random to it. And there we go. I hope you enjoy that.